Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to release a new set of actions called Photoshop Landscape Effects. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I am a French photographer living in Paris and Los Angeles, and I make one tutorial per week. Click here if you want to get for free two actions that we're going to be releasing today, and click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In last episode, I talked to you on how to properly expose your photo. Check it out. This week, I'm happy to announce that I have a new set of actions coming out. It's the first time we're doing this with a great technology where you can just add effects to your photo. It was really made on the stuff that I love to use for landscapes. And it's just one click away. I'm going to offer you for free two of these actions. But first, let me show you how you can use it and how you can install it. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So I want to talk to you about a new product that I created with the help of an amazing Photoshop guru named Jim. And uh, we created what we call the landscape essential effects. I was asking Jim, who is really good on creating, uh, you know, scripts and actions and Photoshop plugins, you know, how I could have actions where I could just try things on photos and see how they work. So once you purchase the landscape essential effect, you're going to get a zip file. Once you have unzipped the zip file, now a little word of warning, it only works for Creative Cloud members, people that have Photoshop CC and above. Uh, I mean, Photoshop CC 2014 being the best. You have to go to your Creative Cloud uh, panel here and make sure that the um, extension manager is installed. If it's not, it's going to be in a list of your uninstalled uh, app and you just have to click on install. So I repeat, you have to install the extension manager CC. Once you have installed it, you have to launch the Adobe extension manager CC. And then all you have to do is click on install, choose the file that you got in the zip file called photo surge. Let me show you the exact full name here, landscape basics fx.zxp. And you just click on open. I've already done it. And you relaunch your Photoshop and boom, here you have, well, first you have to go to Windows extension and take the photo surge landscape essential effect and you're good to go. The idea of this effect was that uh, I wanted to find a way to just try things. You know, there's a few things I like sometimes to add in photos and, but they take so many steps of actions and that I never really want to try them because it's just too long. I'm kind of a lazy guy. Here is an example. This is a photo I took in the southwest of France, and I wanted to see if I could get more mist in the photo, so or more fog. Here, if you click on mist, it's going to create an action that's going to put some mist. But the action, can, you can see there's a layer here called mist, and there is a black layer. So when you see a black layer, all you have to do is have a brush and make sure it's on white. Now, mist is very powerful, so make sure the opacity of your brush is very low, like... Yeah, like 10%. And I can just brush some mist on the floor and see how it looks. Mmm, mist. And I can tell right away, Do it? does it work? It doesn't work. I can always, of course, lower the opacity, you know. For me, it kind of works on this photo. Okay, now I want to add some god rays. There's already some god rays there, but I want to add some more. Well, I can just go to god rays big, for example. There's two sides. I can take uh, this one and I, I can go high. Uh, I'm going to take quality high, I'm going to take go, and it's going to do a whole bunch of actions to create god rays. I'm going to put on pause until it's done. Now here's the god rays. Now I can just take my move tool here, move the god rays exactly where the sun is, and I can just lower the opacity. I think on this one I'm going to go like to, yeah, like 10%. Check it out, before the god rays, after the god rays. And they kind of look nice, but they, they need the colors to be to match. So I can just cl double click on, on the God Rays and go to Color Overlay, click here, and take a color from the scene, like the yellow here, for example, and boom. Now my God Rays are in yellow. And I can do the same thing here on the Color Mist, except the Mist has already got the Color Overlay. So to be able to understand these actions and use them, you, you need to have some basics of Photoshop. It's if you're completely new to Photoshop, it could be a bit hard, but it's, I mean, if you know a little thing to get around Photoshop, it's kind of cool. So all I had to do is click on color ray and the light. And now I got God rays. Let me show you the before and after, before and after. I just added more drama to this photo. 
let me show you some other example. This is a photo I took in the north of France and um, I want to add some drama to it. So I can go to add drama, but the drama is as good now a black layer. So when you see a black layer, well, again, I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to take white as a foreground. On this one, I might maybe go to 25. And I just want to add some drama in the sky, make it what drama is going to do is going to make things more dramatic, you know, and you brush where you want things to be more dramatic and it's uh, and voila. But that's not all. Now I want to add some uh, explode detail. I'm going to explode the detail in the photo because I want this church to have more, uh, you know, uh, well, just detail and more uh, details. I don't know what else to say. Okay, this is the before and after. I'm not sure you can tell on the video. I'm going to zoom in a little bit before and after. Now, by default, the explosive detail is going to apply it everywhere, which I don't, I don't like what it does on the grass. I don't like what it does on the sky. The effect has been applied everywhere. I don't want that. So I'm going to press Alt, click here on the mask, and make sure that the explosive detail layer is mask. And then just with a white brush, again, it's always the opposite. I'm just going to bring in the details back in the church. Let me zoom in a little bit. And um, I'm just going to bring in some details back in the church. It's I'm going to try to sort of overdo it a little bit and uh, so that you can see it on video. OK, this is before the explosion. This is after it, it just makes everything pop. So I've added drama. Now I want to add a bit of mist at the bottom and, you know, it might work, might not work. So I'm going to add some mist. Um, Again, I'm going to take a brush. Uh, this time, mist, you have to go very light. So like 17% is kind of cool. And I can just brush the mist, add a little bit mist on the bottom of the photo. And voila. And in a few brushes, I change the photo and I can see if it works or not. If I think it's, it's stupid, I can just, you know, throw it away and boom, I'm good to go. But, you know, you will be surprised because you will try things you haven't tried before. Here's another photo. On this one... Um, I'm going to add, uh, yeah, I'm going to add again some mist so you can see it's, this one. I think is really going to work here just, you know, because San Francisco is always, you know, a bit in the, in the fog here. So I'm adding a little bit of mist over the Golden Gate Bridge because that's very kind of usual. Um, what else I could do on this one? Uh, I could add some fog. Uh, I can add some fog here on, on the wave. So same thing, take a very light brush. Same thing, it's in black. Whenever you see black, you know you got to be a white brush and you just brush with a... And I'm just going to add here some fog more on the water. So I added some mist over the bridge and some fog on the water. So check it out before the fog. If you think it's too visible, you can also click on it and just add some more blur. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. It's a smart object. So you can just, you know, blur it a little bit and, ma and make it more subtle. And same thing, you know, you can click on color overlay and uh, just click here and take a color. Maybe I just want to add some magenta, very light magenta in the fog. Just a little bit, you know, because there's a bit of magenta in the sky. And, you know, same thing uh, with the fog, with the mist here. I can go here, take some colors that we added here. Boom, so it, it fits a little bit more. Let me show you the before and after. You know, it's not a huge deal, but that's the idea. Uh, I want to try, for example, uh, God rays, thin God rays. Okay, in the, uh, well, the sun is, well, the sun, I think, was behind. So I'm going to try to do it upright here, for example. Okay, now, the thin God rays is pretty crazy. Uh, here it is. If you want to change where the God rays are coming from, you double click on it, and then you can move with the move tool, you can put where the God rays are going to be, like, for example, here. Okay? But then if you want to make the God rays even more different, you can click here on the gradient and you click on randomize and it's going to make the God rays completely different until you have something that you like. So this can be cool, for example. OK, Pr uh, press OK here and OK there. So we're going to fake that the sun is coming here. Now, of course, this is way too much. So I'm going to lower the opacity a lot. OK, and I'm going to blur this a lot. So Blur, Gaussian blur. It says convert to smart object. No problem, converting to smart object. And I'm going to blur it something like this. And you know, I'm like, oh no, I don't like how the way it looks. Boom, I can just throw it away because I've got actions. I can just try things really fast. Show you a couple of other examples. This is a photo I took 
Oh, I already exploded the detail. Now, let me show you. On this one, I just want to add a little bit of mist here because sometimes over the water you have a bit of mist. So make sure that very low brush. Just add a little bit of mist here in New York on the bottom. And what you can do is increase your opacity and just do one little pass for the foreground, for example. So add a little bit of mist. If it's too much, I can lower the opacity. You know, I can just try things, you know. I want to make some more details of the New York photos of the New York buildings. I'm, so I'm, I can go here, explode detail. And it's going to explode the detail everywhere, which I don't want. So I'm going to hold on. I'm going to invert the mask, actually easier. Command I, boom, I invert the mask. And so white brush, and now I'm just going to bring back some more details here on the buildings themselves here in the in in the background. I don't want to do it in the in the background. So check it out before after. Yeah, I don't think you you can tell it's it's not a huge deal here uh, and on the video I'm not sure you can tell, but you can increase the power of the explode of detail by double clicking on the surface blur which is here. And um, on the radius and increase the radius, increase the threshold. And to make it click OK. And now I've added more details here. Yeah, and I don't know if you can tell before, after. And I just wanted it on the building to make them pop and a little bit of mist. I can add some drama if I want to. Or I can also, like, here's a cool thing I have a, uh, an app for, uh, sorry, an action for dodge and burn. So you click just make dodge and burn layer. And then you take the dodge and burn tool which is here as so a dodge tool is going to make things brighter. So you can just put like 50% and I want to make this a little bit brighter here, but make this a little bit brighter and the top here, I want to make it darker. So you just hold on the alt key and it's going to become the burn tool and uh, it's going to make things um, darker. It's going to burn things. I want to burn the edge of the photo, for example. Okay. And um, check it out before after I add a lot of mist if you think the mist is too much you just lower the opacity because I think it's a bit too much I'm doing it a bit too much so that you can see it on video but you, it's just you can try this on all your photos and you will be surprised that some photos were you know uh, of things you can do with it um, I can on the top of it here I can do, gi give a cartoon effect let's see what that's gonna give you know after I've done all the retouching a cartoon effect is going to make the cartoon effect. You know, it's like it looks like a drawing. If you think it's too much, you can lower the opacity, you know, and then it can be nice on some portrait or other things like this photo, for example. I can go here and make the cartoon effect. Oops. The cartoon effect. And uh, I think it works pretty well on this photo because this photo is already, uh, you know, like very um, colorful, like a cartoon. It doesn't work on all the photos and not, not all these effects will work on all the photos. Okay, I'm going to lower the opacity. It's always a bit too much, but I kind of like the, the feeling that it gives, you know, it looks like a drawing now. So there is many more things you can try, but I advise you to try. I'm going to give you as part of this video, one or two free effects so that you can try and, uh, and see for yourself. And if you want to get the whole thing, you'll get a good discount to get everything. It's just a, a simple action, but this is the stuff you can really add on your photo to get them to Places you wouldn't expect. Hope you enjoyed, guys. This is the photo surge landscape effect. All right, guys, I hope you like these actions. Give it a try. You will be surprised to see that it's going to put your photos to a direction or inspire you in a way you did not expect. Mesdames et messieurs, I will see you in another episode. Au revoir.